thank you for joining everyone today. Uh, my name is William Riley, uh, Solutions Architect for Chainlink Labs, and I focus on supporting all of our uh, CFI and enterprise users. Um, also, would like to introduce Frank uh, from Gemini. Frank. Hey guys, uh, I'm Frank. I work on the product management team uh, doing wallet work, uh, pretty much focusing on blockchain integration and stuff like that. Thank you for having me, Ronald. Fantastic, super exciting to have you here. Um, we're gonna start with a, a brief video about um, Chainlink's proof reserve solution and um, you know uh, how we help support Gemini's eFill and then we'll go into some Q and A's after that. Um, first, we're gonna cover Chainlink's proof reserve solutions and uh, the various applications thereof. And we're gonna dive into how proof of reserve enables Gemini's eFill uh, product offering. And then we're going to conclude with an interview with Frank Kenji of Gemini. At a high level, to the current state of aud audits today are, is done in a very slow and manual way. Um, this introduced large uh, areas of, of risk as they're typically done in quarterly to yearly uh, periods. Um, our automated uh, and reliable auditing process via proof of reserve enables that to be reduced down to periods of mere minutes. I think it's important to just define what the word proof is here, you know, and uh, the typical definition is to test or to prove. Really like this uh, uh, quote from On the Brink podcast. Um, they point out in old English, you know, proof initially meant to either prove if something was true or false. In today's uh, current world, we typically look at it as uh, proving if something is true or not. Um, but I think it's important to highlight the symmetrical approach here. Um, proof of reserve is, you know, can be applied in many different areas of life uh, and markets. And um, it simply means a method used by organizations to demonstrate that possesses the adequate reserves of assets to any parties involved. Um, in the form of a proof. And in computer science, uh, this is typically done via uh, cryptography to promote transparencies of all, of all participants. Now, if we look at understanding and going into chain links proof of reserves, uh, we would like to point out that the automated auditing system uh, that is powered by chain links proof of reserve. You know, this is, allows the verification and collateralization of both on and off chain uh, assets. Um, you know, off chain examples could be real world commodities such as gold or fiat held in bank accounts or uh, some more intangible things such as uh, stocks or equities. Um, and it could even be things such as real estate as well. Uh, the Chainlink Proof Reserve solution also, also allows for securely connecting to native on-chain assets, and uh, this allows for, you know, uh, reliability and uh, the ability to uh, mint cross-chain with true transparency. Um, all in all, this eliminates an efficiency and cost for manual auditing process that is, uh, you know, commonly known in today's current state. Uh, Chainlink's proof of reserve enables uh, not only reliable and timely monitoring of those reserves using automated audits based on cryptographic truth, but uh, to put this simply, you know, Chainlink's proof of reserve is the epitome of data validation. There is no higher standard in providing definitive information on reserves. Uh, because of this, legacy approaches are becoming much less trusted day in and day out, and the organizations that provide the best source of information Will ultimately gain a competitive advantage over those who do not. This is especially true for the on-chain world that is currently emerging. And if you want to be credible on-chain, you will need to publish your data on-chain. Uh, consumers and uh, users of decentralized projects will most typically only work with uh, completely transparent on-chain data. You know, some benefits of chain-linked assets with Proof Reserve. Um, not only does it provide that um, enhanced automation via the continuous monitoring and power of the Oracle network, but it also improves your security for any type of warning system or it also disallows any things as um, uh, under collateralized or over collateralized events. And this is done via 
the time-tested infrastructure of Chainlink's decentralized Oracle network that has secured billions of dollars of value in the DeFi space via price feeds. Um, and lastly, it provides that end-to-end -end transparency via all parties involved. You know, some important things to highlight in terms of use cases, uh, whether they're on or off chain is, you know, on, we're looking at the ability to power token minting on chain or cross chain uh, token minting. Um, if you're going to be a crypto custodian, you're gonna stand out if you're really uh, proving your reserve assets. For collateral risk products, uh, you know, for example, insurance companies are required to hold balance sheet reserves to uh, fund claims by their clients. And clients, regulators, and investors are all parties that want to be well informed of the risk or the ability of someone being able to pay a claim or not. For asset liability management, um, this you know, is a better approach that would allow for improved uh, risk management and a uh, higher return for an organization's asset. Um, for preferred customers, um, you know, they would much rather do business with transparent and uh, honest uh, business, business makers. And lastly, for public company reporting, um, you know, this imagine all your quarterly reports being reduced to mere minutes. Um, and this sets a new precedent of high standards that would, you know, uh, be understood and desired for uh, a wide variety of markets, for example, uh, proof of carbon credits uh, could yield you uh, investments both indirectly and directly. Now I'd like to take a few minutes to focus on chain linking off-chain assets via the proof of reserve solution. Um, so for instance, um, Chainlink's proof of reserve utilizes the largest decentralized collection of security reviewed and civil resistant node operators in the industry. Uh, they acquire and verify the reserve data. Uh, these nodes then publish the data on any blockchain, which gives smart contracts the ability to act on that data. Unlike uh, alternative methods, Chainlink nodes are independent and resilient to threats such as man in the middle attacks or DDoS uh, denial of service attacks. You know, this may seem fairly simple and straightforward. That's because it ultimately is, this is the, the same approach of uh, Chainlink's highly uh, reliable and battle-tested price feed data network. Um, the simplicity and similarity to our price feeds approach with this proof reserve solution means it's very easy to apply it as well as adopt it in uh, current systems. Uh, another example of uh, using proof of reserve is uh, tracking carbon emissions. So we could have um, IoT devices distributed across uh, you know, uh, geographic regions. These devices are collecting performance of uh, certain actions and harvesting that and allowing the chain link decentralized Oracle network to consume that data and thus uh, broadcast it and publish it on chain, allowing uh, data consumers to interact with it and subsequently make use of that data on chain, um, such as uh, carbon credit trading, for instance. Um, another example is the verification of custodied uh, crypto assets. Um, so whether these are assets stored uh, in, a, in a bank account or a vault, um, our, our, our decentralized Oracle network takes APIs that are attached to these, these reserves or vaults. Um, they go ahead and come to a consensus in a, a fair manner. And they once again broadcast that to data consumers who can make use of that information on chain, but they can consume it in a transparent and reliable way. One direct example of this is our, um, you know, our case study around trust tokens, USD reserves, which are held in various bank accounts uh, that are escrowed. Uh, we worked with we work with a third party uh, auditor, Armanino, who verifies um, the validity of the status of the bank account um, and provides on chain attestation. Um, our Oracle network goes ahead and consumes that data and subsequently broadcasts it to a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain uh, via proof of reserve. 
This allows the DeFi users to interact with them based upon the outcomes of uh, the results of the proof reserve status itself. Now I'd like to take some time to really dive into Chainlink's uh, uh, powering of Gemini's eFill product offering, which is an on-chain use case. So powering eFill's cross-chain token minting. Um, imagine we have uh, a non-connected uh, non blockchain to the DeFi market. Um, in this example, we're looking at the Filecoin blockchain which is disconnected from the from most of DeFi. So one of the main challenges is how to get that liquidity, which is, you know, for lack of a better term, locked on a blockchain to the world of DeFi. Um, to begin unlocking this value, this is where we introduce Chainlink's decentralized Oracle network and we put it in place such to read the status and validate the status of the reserves being held on the Filecoin uh, blockchain. Via this decentralized and um, you know, automated auditing process via the proof of reserve, this allows a, a, a cryptographic truth to be proved and subsequently broadcast to a smart contract on Ethereum. This, the status of the smart contract allows for minting and burning of tokens pre, uh, based upon the, the value of the reserves on the Filecoin blockchain. Um, once these tokens are, are minted and available, this allows uh, decentralized applications to interact with these tokens that uh, in, in this example are on the Ethereum blockchain, um, thus allowing you to take the liquidity and value that was previously locked on the Filecoin network and uh, being used for um, you know, decentralized um, applications such as lending and borrowing uh, markets in the Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, ultimately, you know, this product offering, as well as many others, uh, boils down to Chainlink's cryptographic truth as a service um, offering. And if you would like to, you know, if you found this uh, valuable today or would like to engage us in any way, um, uh, please reach out to us at integrations at chain.link. Um, and you can begin integrating with Chainlink today. Uh, thank you for your time. And we'll be diving into a discussion with Frank here next. All right, all right. So Frank, um, let's get into it, sir. Um, you know, just to start us off, can you share uh, your personal journey of how you got involved in the blockchain space? Uh, yeah, um, it started in 2012. I was an intern uh, doing sales and trading, and uh, I was working on the trading floor. And we we lost one day. We lost something like 450 million dollars in 45 minutes. So then I realized that okay, uh, I knew finance, and there was this thing called technology that I completely uh, neglected. So when I went back to uh, to college, undergrad, um, a few friends were we're talking about this thing called called crypto Bitcoin that they bought at nine dollars. Now I was trading at twelve, so that got me interested. So I started buying uh, a little bit, and when I graduated college, I ended up quitting my student trading job to join a startup uh, that we were trying to buy and sell crypto um, to people around New York City. Um, that was it was around 2014 or 13 that New York's that New York came out with the bit licenses. And also through running like that, that business, we realized that it wasn't quite mature. So at the time I decided to kind of take a step back and learn and focus more on the tech skill. So I did some FinTech work for a while and eventually I ended up at Gemini doing product management um, on the white side. Wow, that's really cool, Frank. Uh, thank you for, for sharing that with us. I thought that, um... You know, you coming from the traditional trading world is uh, really cool to see how you, you you progressed over to the crypto space and blockchain space. Um, you know, so now that you're with Gemini, you've been there for a while. Um, what trends, um, you know, does Gemini see around uh, retail and institutional users as they're, you know, as they're entering the blockchain ecosystem today? Yeah, um, uh, something that we've been very... Uh, 
intrigued by and I'm very interested by as well has been the increasing diversity that we see in both just the candidate pool that we're receiving and also our customer base. Uh, one example that I got from our marketing team was uh, if you look back maybe like 2018, our Twitter page was male dominant and now we're reaching it. Uh, a point where it's almost 50-50. So I'm very happy to see that the community is getting more and more uh, diverse, um, which is great to see. Uh, but other things that we're seeing on the tech side is um, we have this boom or like this rise of NFT and also DeFi going beyond just Ethereum. So we have, uh, so you have some of these projects that were uh, very in the infancy in 2017, now maturing on like on different network, uh, like for example, layer two, uh, like the battle of like the layer twos and all of the different applications there. Um, that is a trend that we're seeing because uh, our users are getting more interested in all of these new use cases, uh, which is very interesting. Yeah, uh, totally agree with you. I think, uh, you know, the increased diversity is only gonna make this uh, ecosystem stronger as a whole. Um, NFTs is a super, um, you know, hot thing in the market, and um, I, I find it extremely uh, interesting. So to see that uh, mature as well is is really yeah. cool. And um, yeah, I think 2022 the narrative might be around uh, L2s and NFTs. So uh, very astute observations there. Um, you know, Frank with Gemini uh, recently announced the EFIL you know, a wrapped file token, Filecoin token, uh, which utilizes the chain link proof reserve, of course. What benefits will EFIL bring to the users across the DeFi ecosystem as you see it? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, so even before we talk about EFIL, I wanna talk about Filecoin. Uh, Filecoin is a storage service where users pay for data storage, same as AWS. They pay using a fill token and when they pay, uh, the miners are actually the ones providing storage space to receive those tokens. So for you to become a miner, you need to stake Filecoin to a node and link that to like a little bit to like a storage system. And uh, the more Filecoin you have, the more likely you are to, to actually mine and receive uh, like the Filecoin uh, reward. But because Filecoin is its own blockchain, there isn't any, uh, there isn't any any lending market uh, essentially there. So for a miner to be able to, to, to do mining work, they have to either find Firecoin you know, like on the table or like a dark market, or they have to buy those Firecoins outright. What we try to do with EFIL is to bring Firecoin to where DeFi is. And the idea is to uh, bring Firecoin to an ERC20 token that can be used in the DeFi ecosystem. Um, so we, we actually um, have the data on our end that we track for the mining operation and, and like all of that, but because we wanna be de decentralized, we wanna be DeFi friendly, uh, this is where Chainlink Proof of Reserve is very useful because you don't have to rely just on what Gemini is telling you. So using the Proof of Reserve is a way for us to be transparent and also make uh, EFIL be more accessible. For example, anyone today can build their own smart contract and just use the EFIL proof of reserve. You don't have to take what Gemini is telling you, just use what Chainlink has to verify that you have the funds actually in those reserve. So the way that it works is Gemini locks up Firecoin in a vault and issues wrap Firecoin. So proof of reserve helps verify that Gemini in fact, has this PowerPoint in the vault some, somewhere, which we think is great. Yeah, very, very cool. And I think, um, you know, Gemini being, um, you know, a little bit of a leader in innovation here in the space, connecting the two different technologies, leveraging the Filecoin blockchain and what it's capable of, and then tapping into, you know, the value that it provides and bringing it into the land of, of uh, you know, smart contracts, I think is extremely valuable. So. Um, you know, thank you for that, Frank. And then, you know, to, to kind of uh, further on to some of your, your points that you just uh, made there, in general, how do you, you think, um, you know, Chainlink's proof of reserve will impact the DeFi or CFI or maybe even 
uh, what we're starting to see is the CD5 blending uh, space and the broader blockchain space. Yeah. Um, the proof of reserve is a great way for bringing transparency uh, so that people don't necessarily need to trust each other to interact. So what this actually shows is, you know, uh, if anyone is saying that they have tokenized gold, for example, and that you can use a proof of reserve to prove that, that the goal is in fact there. Um, I believe that having the services around creates a more decentralized world where anyone can interact and actually uh, being able to know that there is substance at the other end of this bargain. So, um, and also with crypto and just with the financial system in general, there are a lot of audits that need to happen. So leveraging a technology like Proof of Reserve can definitely decrease the like the uh, overhead that it takes just to audit. Uh, with something mm -hmm. like like the proof of reserve, you can query this smart contract anytime and then compare it to whatever you see on the Ethereum network. And that should be um, like there should never be a scenario where someone has minted more token than what they say that they're holding. So um, I think that proof of reserve impact on DeFi or even uh, CeFi, you just bring some accountability and make it a lot more transparent. Yeah, perfect. That's ex exactly a lot of um, you know our, our intent here with proof of reserve is to prevent fractionalized uh, minting situations that we see kind of common in the traditional space, and to you know allow uh, the utilization of an easy to use and consume uh, product, both from an implementation standpoint, as well as a DeFi user standpoint. So very happy to hear um, that you guys consider it um, an easy to use product and, and improves transparency. You know, um, I have only a couple more questions for you, Frank. So now um, I'd like to, you know, turn towards the future. What are some of the novel products being built as a result of the innovation of, of the, uh, the blending of, of DeFi and CeFi spaces? Yeah, so uh, some of the products that we are looking at, uh, we still kind of looking to make sure that uh, that we find the right direction. Like for example, with Web Filecoin, that was the early days of bridging. Now you have uh, you have more intricate bridges that we could that that we can leverage. So uh, on our end, the very first step is to uh, support all the uh, ecosystems that we can, and then go from there, you see what our users are asking for and then bridging into those world as we see our users like demanding what they want to do. Um, because right now you have businesses focusing just on bridges. I believe that it may be a good time to kind of observe and see what comes out of it before uh, we start wrapping. It. Um, what it wouldn't work is we don't want a world where you have 50 rep file coins. So, Essentially, you want to make life easier for the users, and we're just kind of waiting on seeing where that goes. Fantastic, fantastic. So, yeah, I think you know you kind of touched on it there. Um, you know, one one thing we we heard from the audience here was, you know, um, was there anything in specific that made Gemini want to, uh, you know, utilize and make this product offering first with Filecoin, and and are you considering? Um, wrapping other assets to Ethereum from other L1s or, or possibly L2s? Yeah, so we went after Filecoin because Gemini was the first ex uh, exchange to actually uh, to support it. And we have close partnership with the Filecoin team. So this was really meant to be a proof of concept with actual real life use case. So uh, we are planning to supporting and bridging a user's asset across different, uh, whether it's L1 or smart contract or L2, uh, kind of how I say we're still building out the ecosystem, but their goal is to essentially uh, any asset that user wants to move from one chain to another, Gemini should be able to support that in the future, whether it's by launching new token or partnering with other people who have well-established tokens. Very cool, very cool. Um, yeah, so we're just, we're looking at other questions coming in. Um, I think this one might be chain link specific. So I'll, I'll go ahead and field this one. Um, and I, it, it goes very well with uh, your previous 
um, statements there, Frank. Um, the question is, is it possible to implement Chainlink's proof of reserve with other networks? Um, and uh, short, short answer is yes, it is. So um, to Frank's point, uh, Frank is, and Gemini is trying to you know, allow um, product offerings across different chains and being able to do that swiftly and smoothly. Uh, similarly, in um, the, the world of Chainlink, we are blockchain agnostic. Um, with that, we are able to read from uh, any L1 and subsequently uh, place a proof of reserve onto another network, allowing a similar function to happen that, um, that Gemini is doing with eFill today and um, allowing you to mint tokens on other chains, whether those are from L1s to L1s or L1s to L2s um, and, and that one as well. Um, let's see. Let's see if we have any other questions. Um, uh, I guess lastly, um, Frank, and, and maybe this one, um, maybe you guys need a little bit more time on your roadmap, maybe not. But do you have any intentions of bringing wrapped Filecoin or, or eFill to other L1s or, or L2s um, in, in the DeFi ecosystem? Um wrap file coin specifically uh we don't have anything um uh planned yet uh we're still working on making sure that wrap file coin is integrated on the ethereum based uh protocols uh and the demand we essentially are looking for where the demands are um, we haven't seen a huge demand for having Filecoin per se on any other network uh but what we're thinking about is Fielding the request, seeing what people are doing on this network, and then move the asset that they need there. Um, our goal for for Firecoin was to create um, a marketplace, um, and um, we will gauge everything based on the demands that we see. So, rough Firecoin specifically now, but we're looking at other assets that um, I don't think that sharing the list here will make sense since nothing has been ready yet. But we're certainly looking at how to bridge asset uh, across the planet. Perfect. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. Uh, the market-driven roadmap is is pretty key to success. So, whatever the market wants, we will will go after. Um, yeah. You know, I I know we're getting close to time here, Frank. I really do appreciate all the time that you've given us today. I'm just going through uh, some last maybe questions, uh, potential questions. Um, let's see. We had one. Um, question here is what are some other use cases for proof of reserve that um, we're excited to to uh, to talk about? You know, outside of, from a chain links perspective, is outside of uh, being able to uh, mint tokens across chains. It's also exciting to see the ability to actually take off chain assets and mint them uh, in a tokenized rep uh, representation. Whether this is uh, gold gold vaults, um, we're also seeing a large uptick in the desire for carbon uh, carbon data as the carbon credit uh, market is is greatly expanding. Um, so as we're seeing uh, that that product and that marketplace uh, mature, we're we're pretty excited to see the potentials there and the subsequently of of, of wrapping those assets to different chains. Um, so yeah, I think. That's about time for today. Um, so I really do uh, appreciate all the time today, uh, Frank. It was a pleasure having you. Um, and I do want to uh, remind everybody that uh, in the audience that we will be uh, putting a survey in the chat. It's a quick two minute survey. Um, and it will, um, if you could provide us uh, feedback on today's webinar, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. So. Um, Thank you for everybody's time today and uh yeah we'll see you at the next webinar thanks for having me